In this presentation, I'm going to talk about why research is like cooking. There are a lot of ways research is like cooking. Both of them can be frustrating, even lonely at times, but both of them can also be collaborative, a lot of fun, and sometimes even a little bit messy. Another way that research is like cooking is that anyone can learn the skills needed for great research. For many college students, cooking is like research in another way. Instead of cooking great homemade meals, we sometimes take shortcuts and settle for what is quick, easy, and familiar. Sort of like when we use our old familiar tools like Google and Wikipedia for our research. Why do we take shortcuts and settle for meals of ramen noodles and Pop-Tarts? There are a lot of reasons. Sometimes we're just too busy, don't have enough time to cook a full meal. Sometimes we leave things to the last minute, and then we're stuck making a meal with whatever we have on hand. With research, we found that students advise other students to start early so that they aren't stuck writing a research paper with only the resources they can find the night before the paper is due. Many of the same guidelines that apply to cooking apply to doing research. In cooking, as in research, you have to plan ahead and know what you want to make. Good cooking and good research both depend on quality ingredients. To write a great research paper, you'll need to find high quality resources. And just like you can't create a full meal out of only a few ingredients, you need a variety of resources to craft a convincing research paper. Finally, just like most chefs make meals that they themselves would want to eat, you'll find you do your best research when you pick a topic that you care about. A big part of planning ahead is knowing what you're making. You have to have a recipe. The same is true for writing a research paper. You have to have a topic and a general plan for what kind of paper you want to write. An outline of your research argument can serve as your recipe, and it will have the added value of telling you what kinds of resources or ingredients you need to write your paper. The next step, of course, is to go shopping. Just like you turn your recipe into a shopping list, you need to turn your research outline into a list of the type of resources you need. By creating a shopping list, you're taking control of the kinds of resources that you'll use in your research paper instead of just settling for what you can find or what you have on hand. And remember that the research you're doing is likely to require more than just books. You may need newspaper or journal articles, or you may want to consult some items in your library's special collections. One very important step in both cooking and research is the taste testing stage. Great chefs do lots of taste testing so that they can find just the right ingredients for the meal they're making. You need to do the same for your research. You should plan on looking at plenty of books, articles, and abstracts before you settle on the resources that you actually need. Now that you have your recipe and all the ingredients you need, it's time to create your meal. Remember that a great recipe calls for the chef to mix the ingredients together just right so that they work together to create the final product. The same is true with a research paper. You can't just throw all your resources into your paper. You need to synthesize them and relate them to one another. And you need to put your own garnish on your meal. Put your own voice into your research paper so that it isn't just a summary of all your sources. If you remember that research is like cooking and that it requires planning, a recipe, and great ingredients, you will produce research that is the equivalent of a gourmet meal. Bon appetit.